Here's a question. If you're already in business, are there some things you wish you had known before starting out? Are there any lessons you wish you didn't have to learn the hard way? Trust me, I get it. When starting a business, you shouldn't put the cart before the horse and make sure you leave the rose-colored glasses at home. Now, let's talk about it. I'm P.G. Williams, copywriter and brand builder turned business owner of multiple entities. While corporate America is in my past, I've parlayed those skills into the future, focusing on growing my businesses, learning valuable lessons, and helping others do it too. What started as an idea to capitalize off my skills has helped so many to create a strong brand with actionable steps, copy, and content that matters. I created the Talk Like a Brand podcast to give you relatable, simple strategies and advice that makes you think, reflect, and implement. If you're an entrepreneur or one in the making who wants to build a strong brand with a solid foundation, you're in the right place. So let's get into it. Getting to the foundation of your brand takes work. It isn't easy and you may get frustrated a time or two or three on your journey. One of the most important things to remember is that you can do this. If building your brand means as much to you as you say it does, then doing the work is a no-brainer. The question is, are you cut out for it? I mean, really cut out for building a brand from the ground up because it's no crystal stair. There will be times when you want to throw the towel all the way in, times when you question why you're doing this and whether you'll ever get to a place where you feel you can breathe. It's often said, if running your business feels hard, you're doing it right. Although it sounds a little off, that's probably an accurate depiction for most. So think about your business or brand. You started with a dream, a purpose, right? And while that's the very beginning of what could be one of the best decisions of your life, it's hard to think of a business as a marathon that you're consistently training for and learning about when you just want to get to the finish line. So here are some things you should know. One, have a plan. Planning doesn't always mean perfect, but at least you have an idea of where you want the business to go and how to get there. Vision and mission, anyone? You can have an entire business plan or a sheet of notebook paper, but have something you can refer back to and build on. Two, start small and grow from there. If you're bootstrapping, you're definitely not alone. That means you've decided to use the money you already have in your savings or that friends and family may have given you. Many people choose this because they don't want to go into additional debt or they may be trying to figure out whether this is something they really want to do. They also probably don't know of any resources that could give them funding. But one thing you need to do is watch your spending. If you need a website, try a low-cost alternative, Squarespace or Wix. Graphics. Canva is a good solution. There are also courses and challenges you can take that have valuable information. And don't forget, Fiverr and Upwork can help fill in those gaps. Even if you don't have a lot of money to start with, progress is still within reach. Three, take time to understand who you are. It's always a good thing to do a SWOT analysis on yourself before starting a business. While it's also necessary when you start it moving forward, Many entrepreneurs don't consider themselves SWAT worthy. The question is, why not? You should know your internal strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats about yourself before you even think about moving forward into a business. That way, you'll already know what you're bringing to the business, what you need to work on, and the things you do that could potentially sabotage that business. Self-reflection is a must. Four. Research. Some people just jump into entrepreneurship headfirst without doing the research. And don't worry, most of us have been there. You're excited about this idea you have and you just want to share it with the world, right? Well, that sounds good, but what happens when you're out of a lot of time and money when you could have done the research and found out valuable information that could have alleviated going through that lesson? You should know a lot about the market and your target audience or customer going in. You should also know who your competitors are and how you can be different. The resources are there. Information on Google is free. Don't count yourself out and don't hurt yourself by not knowing what you're up against. 
Five, you may question yourself. As an entrepreneur, there may be many days when you're in tears and wondering what you're doing. I've been there. Studies have shown that 84% of entrepreneurs and small business owners go through imposter syndrome at some point. Now, if you're questioning yourself, good. That means you care about your business and it matters to you. And that also means you want to succeed. So you're going to put in the work to make it happen. Six, don't be afraid to fail. As an entrepreneur, your version of failing is probably a lot different than someone looking in from the outside. When you see something is not working, take the time to assess, revamp, recharge, and keep going. Some level of failure may be inevitable, but get up, brush yourself off, take that L and the lesson and pivot it into something greater because you got this. Seven, make time to work on your business. So many people get caught up working in the business, they don't work on the business. Let me say that again. So many people get caught up working in the business, they don't work on the business. Sometimes you're a jack of all trades in your business and eventually that's going to wear you out. You have to take time to be strategic. Don't be that person. Schedule time in your calendar and think about your strategy. Because if you don't have time to make plans, you'll find yourself in the same place a year from now. Please don't do that to yourself or your business. Eight, protect your energy. Starting and running a business is definitely not for the weak. It's stressful, frustrating, confusing, and it can take a toll on your mental and physical health. I want you to remember always protect your energy. When it feels as if things are too heavy, take a break. Remember, this is your business, so you have to be at your best to run it. Don't try and do everything at one time. Pace yourself. And when you can, hire others to take the load off. Nine, your friends and family are probably not your customers, and that's okay. Many entrepreneurs feel that if they start a business, their friends and family will come flocking to support them. But in many cases, that's not what happens. There are so many stories of entrepreneurs feeling down because their friends and family went out and bought the same products elsewhere. And I'm here to tell you, get over it. They're not your target audience. Sometimes it takes you breaking that ceiling and becoming super successful before they even realize you needed or wanted their support. Charge it to their heads and not their hearts. 10. Everyone has an opinion. What others have to say really doesn't matter until it does. On this journey, you'll find many naysayers, people who may doubt you or think you should be doing things differently. And that's just how it is. Everyone has an opinion, but won't or can't step into your shoes. So just smile and keep it moving. 11. Know your numbers. I can't say this enough. Know your numbers enough to keep track of your startup costs, what you spend monthly, and how much you're currently making. You may not be the best at accounting, but you can pay attention to what's going on. You may find that you can cut costs somewhere and not spend so much while getting started. Trust me, costs add up quickly. If you're using an email service, that adds up. If you're paying for a website monthly or domains, that adds up. If you have to get supplies, that adds up. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're always at zero. So know your numbers. And of course, find your tribe. This may take some time, but find like-minded people you can trust. You want people who are invested in building their business just as much as you are invested in building yours. If you find a mentor to throw in the mix, that's even better. But those people in your tribe will understand your challenges and they'll hold you accountable. And we all need some level of accountability as we're building our brands. Now, I want you to believe in yourself. And also know that nothing happens overnight. Your drive, determination, and tenacity We'll see you through this because guess what? You are enough. Go follow me on Instagram at The Right Mix and Color My Brand. And let me know what you think about the podcast because I love hearing from you. Sign up for my weekly Brand Bits newsletter at bit.ly backslash get brand bits dropping every Tuesday. And of course, we're on every single week. Have an amazing day.
Until next time. Thank you.